The world around us is full of clocks, many of them beautiful and well-crafted, but broken. While they may look nice and pretty on the outside, they give a horribly wrong account of truth and reality. Some of these broken clocks can be fixed with just a small adjustment, but others are fundamentally broken. There's only one thing you can do with that type of clock. Chuck it. And hope it doesn't hit anyone. For the rest of this speech, we'll be looking at one of these fundamentally broken clocks, the Harry Potter series. I hope to persuade you that the Harry Potter series is just like a broken clock. It might look nice and pretty on the outside, but on the inside, it is broken irreparably. Now, while there are many internal mechanisms that are broken in the Harry Potter series, I only really have time to cover one of them today, how it deals with magic. Now, please keep in mind that these, this point doesn't just apply to Harry Potter, but to all stories. The Harry Potter series is just one of the most influential today. But wait, you may say, the Harry Potter series is fiction, so it doesn't have to conform with what is morally true in our world, right? Wrong. Let me give you one simple reason for this. Every story teaches. Just think about it. Every story that is created by people teaches something, even if it's as subtle as Marvel's special effects studio is really cool. While that may not be a moral issue, you get my point. We need to be careful about what is being taught in fiction, because even though it is in fiction, it still teaches us in the real world what is right and how to act. Why is it that some people glean wise statements of actual truth from fiction and then excuse major faults because, oh, it's just fiction? What about the people who can't tell the difference? And if it's just fiction, then how do we know that those true statements aren't just fiction too? Essentially, God is a great clockmaker, and all clocks on Earth should conform to him. If they don't, then they're broken. Now, I don't think we can rule out all fiction as being wrong because of this. I personally have no problem with fiction as long as it calls God God and conforms with what he calls right and wrong. But if it doesn't, then I see it as on the same level as the Quran or the Bhagavad Gita. Now let's look more in detail at that fundamental flaw in the Harry Potter series. Um, first, let's see what the Bible says about this. Deuteronomy 18, 9 through 12 says, quote, When you enter the land which the Lord your God shall give you, you shall not learn to imitate the detestable things of those nations. There shall not be found among you one who uses divination, one who practices witchcraft, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who casts a spell, or a medium, or spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For whoever does these things is detestable to the Lord, end quote. Revelation 21.8 even goes so far as to say that witches and wizards will go to hell. But the Harry Potter series says that almost every single one of these things is good and fine. And it says that there is no such thing as hell. This is all in direct contradiction to what the Bible clearly states. We may not, even in fiction, call good what God calls detestable. So enough about this. Now I'd like to move on to address three common arguments used to defend the magic in the Harry Potter series. One, it is magic, not witchcraft. Uh, this argument goes that magic does not exist in our world, only witchcraft does. Therefore, God can never have outlawed magic, just witchcraft. I have three responses to this. If this is, one, if this is true, then why is the school that Harry is sent to called Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry? Two, every single dictionary I have found defines witchcraft and magic as synonyms, and they all basically define witchcraft as Merriam-Webster's online dictionary did. Quote, the use of sorcery or magic. Three, the proposition that magic does not exist in our world is just plain wrong. Just think about it. Where did we get our English word magic? From the Greek word magos, which is defined by Hebrew and Greek expert James Strong, the inventor of Strong's numbers, as sorcerer. Thus, we can see that the Bible actually references to, knowing its origin, we can see that the Bible actually references magic in itself. For example, Acts 8, 9. Quote, now there was a man named Simon who formerly practiced magic in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming to be somebody great, end quote. As we can see, the Bible actually says that magic does indeed exist. And by the way, God condemns it. The second argument in, to justify the magic in the Harry Potter series goes that the Harry Potter series is so obviously fiction that no one ever has or will become a witch from it. Proponents of this idea often say that the only noted references of people becoming witches come from an article written by The Onion, a satirical news source. 
So in responding to this point, I've completely cross-checked to make sure that absolutely nothing that I have said, or will say, has come from any Onion article. <laughs> Ms. Rowling is often quoted as saying, quote, I have met thousands of children now, and not even one time has a child come up to me and said, Ms. Rowling, I'm so glad that I've read your books, because now I want to be a witch. What they don't tell you, and maybe don't even know themselves, is that Rowling said this in 1999. That was 15 and a half years ago. To put that into perspective, I hadn't turned three yet. Rowling had just published her third book, and none of the movies had been made. Is this quote still reliable for how it is today? Just one year later, Rowling said, in reference to her spells, quote, I have met people who assure me very seriously that they are trying to do them, end quote. This quote alone, by Rowling herself, is enough to show that her books do indeed influence people towards witchcraft. But Rowling isn't the only one. A personal friend of mine once said that if she could be anyone in the world, fictitious or not, she would be Hermione Granger, one of Harry Potter's best friends and a witch. Ten-year-old Geoa Bishop, when interviewed about the fourth book, said, quote, I was eager to get to Hogwarts because I liked what they learned there, and I want to be a witch. End quote. These are only a few examples I can offer. But first we must ask, what, why is this happening? Peter Green, a doctorate student at Wheaton University and a fan of the book series himself, explains why in a book review. Quote, Rowling sets her match in the context of our real world and explicitly ties it to historic pagan religions such as Druidism. That is, within the logic of the books themselves, the magic practiced by Harry and Co is equated with magic practiced by real pagans in our world." End quote. So much for Harry Potter magic not existing in our world. No, I'm not saying that if you read or watch the Harry Potter series, you will become a witch. No, all I am showing is that the Harry Potter series has influenced people towards witchcraft, contrary to popular opinion. The third argument in favor of justifying magic in the Harry Potter series goes something like this. Peter, you say that the Harry Potter series is just like a broken clock. Well, what about all the good quotes and principles in it? Would you throw out all of those just because of the magic? My response is, of course. Even a broken clock is right twice a day, but it's still broken. It is not worth defiling our minds by enjoying what God calls detestable just to get a few true statements. If you want to hear those statements, look somewhere else that doesn't call detestable good. To some of these points, I'd like to tell you about this really great book I've been reading. It's really great, well-written, has everything you could ask for in a good book. It's about a boy named Diego Lopez who just has this gift for being able to eat people's hearts really well. So he goes to Jose's school of Aztec priests to learn how to properly cut people's hearts out on Aztec sacrificial auto altars and eat them with graphic descriptions explaining how it works. It's so cool. Uh, okay, I see you're getting a little concerned. Let me explain. Diego is the good guy. He only uses what he learns for good. In fact, he's trying to stop this other Aztec priest who's cutting people's hearts out improperly. And it isn't murder. It's a little different, but it's not murder. Oh, and did I mention how he talks about how great it is when his friends work together and how awesome love is? Just kidding. I am reading no such book. But you see, the Harry Potter series is no different than the book I just described. They both portray what God calls evil and deserving of death, murder, and magic as being good and heroic. In conclusion, we've seen that all fiction stories should conform with God, what God calls right and wrong because all stories teach. In addition, we've seen that the magic portrayed in the Harry Potter series is diametrically opposed to Christianity because it calls, it calls good and heroic what God calls detestable or an abomination. Now, again, keep in mind that these points do not just apply to Harry Potter, but to all stories with good magic in it. Say Frozen, Tangled, Aragorn, fill in the blank story. Please, I would e e uh, beg you, do not support the Harry Potter series or any story like it. It is just like a broken clock, which might look nice and pretty on the outside, but on the inside is badly broken. Essentially, the Harry Potter series is a story about a boy doing what God calls an abomination and who will go to hell, fighting an adult that God calls an abomination and will go to hell. Why keep it? Chuck it. Thank you. <laughs>